back air fellow astronomers this is Michael Skokakis from uh, Buckeye Arizona uh, it is the 29th of December uh, time is currently five o'clock on a Sunday evening late afternoon hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas and I hope everybody's gonna have a safe new year uh, but uh, tonight I as you guys can see right here mounted up on the tripod I have acquired a brand new optical tube assembly, a reflector. Uh, this is the Celestron uh, C6N optical tube assembly with a primary mirror of approximately 150 millimeters. The telescope is a focal five setup and uh, it's primarily designed for uh, astrophotography and uh, wide field views of star clusters, stars, and stuff like that. I have actually had the opportunity to uh, test it out on uh, some planetary targets, and it does actually perform pretty well for a focal five. Uh, this telescope does pretty much smoke my uh, Orion Star Blast 114 millimeter uh, imaging OTA, but uh, comes into about almost 29 inches long. It's about 9.5 pounds with the cradle and the mounting bar. Uh, it does have a Crafer style focuser on it, or I'm sorry, a rack and pinion stock focuser on it. It does accept 1.25 inch eyepieces and the, uh, I know it's kind of hard to see in the video guys, uh, the uh, the focuser, the, no the nose, the nozzle piece of the focuser actually screws off and enables you to attach your T-ring from your uh, Canon DSLR or Nikon, whatever you guys will be shooting. So. Anyway, tonight we're going to be doing some shooting with the uh, DSLR, and I'm also going to be doing some shooting with the uh, Mead uh, DSi2 Pro, which right here is getting ready to do some dark shots with it. But uh, all in all, I paid about $199 for this optical tube assembly, brand new. It came with the cradles, it came with the dovetail mounting bar, and uh, uh, it's a pretty good little telescope. I'm pretty impressed with it. The star images were pretty good. Uh, collimation out of the box was decent. I uh, had to uh, do a little readjustment with the uh, laser collimator and my um, my little eyepiece collimations that I have, but other than that. So anyway, we're going to put it through its paces tonight, and I'll take some photos and uh, put them up with, along with this video. And uh, let's let me know what you guys and gals think. I think it's a really good optical tube assembly. Um, it's pretty much pushing the weight of the, the weight requirement, uh, the weight capability of the uh, LXD75 go-to mount. I know me designed these to uh, run the 10-inch Schmidt Newtonian, but uh, that is an awfully heavy, awfully heavy optical tube assembly. Uh, with this kind of uh, equatorial mount, the the highest you want to go, as long as far as uh, aperture, is probably a, a, an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain, or you want to stick with a um, a 6-inch Newtonian. So we'll see how this guy performs tonight, and uh, I'll give you guys some uh, shots, and uh, we'll go from there. So anyway, I hope you guys are out enjoying the uh, the, the stars tonight. Uh, looks like it's going to be pretty much a crescent moon, and that won't be up to about 3 in the morning. So we got some pretty dark skies out here in Buckeye tonight. And uh, we'll see how everything goes. So clear skies, and uh, stay tuned for the uh, pictures. Hey, what's going on, my fellow backyard astronomers? It's Michael Skokakis, and formerly known as Stargazer1 uh, from Buckeye, Arizona. And guys, I just got done running the brand new OTA through her paces tonight out back and uh, I already put up a couple little test videos and uh, my good friend Charlie which is one of my subscribers Charlie you already checked it out Charlie's very impressed with uh, what, what we got going on right here so uh, anyway let me give you the gist of uh, what I have uh, come to uh, realize with this OTA what it's capable of what it's not capable of uh, some of the pros and cons of it. I'll also read you some of the uh, specs that actually came with the, uh, there it is right there. Got the nice little manual that uh, you actually get if you get it with a mount. Uh, I guess Lashon just sends it with the uh, tube as well. But uh, we'll be going through some uh, quick little specifications uh, in regards to the uh, C6N Newtonian optical tube assembly. And I'll also show with you, uh, share with you my uh, what I've experienced tonight with it, and uh, just the, uh, it, it, I gotta speak frankly here, I mean, this <laughs> this little yard cannon blew away my world, I mean, I was impressed, uh, the uh, the collimation held very well, even though through the night, the temperature, the ambient temperature, and the tube, and the optics started cooling down, and as everybody knows with telescopes, you really gotta watch your collimation, it's a critical time during that time of, of night, because as the temperatures drop, your telescope tubes, whether it be steel or carbon fiber or aluminum, your, your mirror cells, your lenses, everything shrinks and everything kind of moves as things cool down. I was very impressed with the uh, Celestron C6N in that regard. It actually held its collimation. There was not a lot of flex with the temperature. I didn't notice any kind of abnormal star shapes or any kind of abnormal diffraction rings while doing the star test with the telescope. 
and uh, it held pretty well for the night. And right now, currently in Buckeye, the time is uh, it's about 10:20, uh, about 10:21 p.m. I uh, decided to go ahead and just get the uh, the test shots done and go ahead and break it down, bring it back in, so I can get the review done. And um, it, it's probably about 41 degrees, 42 degrees right now, and the telescope did very well. I was I was very impressed. Uh, I've already broken down my cannon, took the cannon off it. Uh, the, you know, I got the T uh, the T adapters and all the mounts there. They put those all back away. Uh, as I said previously in the video, the the focuser does have the ability to screw off the no the nozzle or the nose piece. We like to call it a nozzle, and you can actually screw on your T adapter to the focuser itself. So, a plus for Celestron in my book for that. They actually went the extra mile and and incorporated that that feature into the stock focuser. Again, this is a rack and pinion focuser. It's not a Crayford. Um, it can be upgraded down the road, but I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed with, with how it's working right now. I'm not having any kind of problems with it. Uh, it does have a tension knob on the very top of the focuser, so I can lock down the tension. Uh, there's no slop. There's no play. There's nothing like that. I'm not seeing stars dance all over the field of view as I'm racking the focus in and out. It actually works very well. And the fact that they incorporated uh, the, the male threads to go ahead and screw onto a T-adapter for a DSLR, Perfect. Good job, Celestron. Most companies don't do that unless they come with a, a straight-up uh, 10 to 1 Crayford focuser, and those tubes are going to be a lot more money. So, you know, Celestron did a very good job listening to their customers in that regard, and I, I can't say enough about that. I'm very happy with that with this telescope. So anyway, it is a Celestron 6-inch reflector, okay? This is a Newtonian. This is the note is the model is a C6N. Uh, Celestron makes the C6N, the C8N, and the C10 inch. Okay, they go all the way up to a 10 inch. And uh, Charlie, uh, I know you uh, were mentioning on my videos, uh, my buddy Charlie here, uh, one of my subscribers on my channel, he actually uses a Celestron 10 inch uh, Newtonian reflector, uh, the big brother of this one, to do most of his imaging. Uh, so that's one heck of a, a yard cannon for him. So that's kind of cool. But uh, anyway, so let's look at this real quick. So we got the C6N, okay? This is a 150 millimeter, six inch reflector. That's the measurement of your primary mirror. It's 150 millimeters. The focal length on this uh, OTA, the, the six inch, is a focal five. Uh, it looks like most of them, the, the C6N, the C8, and the C10 are all pretty much focal five with the exception of the 10 inch. The 10 inch is coming in at a focal 4.7. Very fast optics. Uh, collimation is critical on the big boy. Okay, but these focal fives are looking pretty good here. There's not really a lot of uh, issues with these. Uh, they do ship with a finder scope, a 6x30. That's one of the things I uh, kind of got rid of and I put my uh, 8x50 right angle on there. Uh, let's see, the mounts, they do ship with the CG5 mounts, which are now becoming discontinued. If you can find one, grab it. Uh, focuser, 1.25. Accessory tray, yes, tripod, blah, 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 blah. Technical specifications on the tube. Highest useful magnification for the 6-inch is 354X. Lowest useful magnification for the 6-inch, 21X. The limiting stellar magnitude, this is a 13.4. Now, my Mead 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain is a 14.1, maybe 14.2, depending on the seeing conditions. So for a 6-inch reflector to come in at a healthy 13.4, that's some serious muscle power right there. This thing does have the power, and you'll see uh, later on quickly here in this video the images I've taken with this telescope that I'll be incorporating here in this review. 13.4 uh, is not bad. That's some serious light gathering power for a 6 inch. And uh, for, in, uh, for inch for inch uh, compared to a refractor, you're going to blow a refractor away. Okay, so that, that's pretty good. I like that. Your resolution is 0.92 arc seconds. Uh, photographic resolution is 400 line, light gathering power 459 to the unaided eye, field of view standard eyepiece 1.3 degrees, linear field of view at 1,000 yards 68 feet, optical coatings standard or aluminum coatings, so that's, that's pretty much the coatings you're going to find on Newtonian reflectors nowadays. Uh, most of the companies are using the aluminum and then they, they, will, they will overcoat that whole thing with uh, quartz or aluminum oxide or something like that just to help prolong and make sure that mirror doesn't deform and he doesn't scratch and all that stuff. So that's pretty cool. So all in all, I mean, just some quick little specs about it. They're pretty, they're pretty standard, I mean, for a 6-inch. But, I mean, from my personal uh, point of view, this, uh, I'm very impressed with it. Um, I was looking at getting the Celestron Omni XLT 150 in. They're 150 millimeter Newtonian. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive. Unfortunately, the company that I got this through, uh, they couldn't uh, find it. They didn't have it in stock. So I, I, I decided to go ahead and settle 
on the uh, C6 in, and honestly, I'm, I am not disappointed. Uh, like I said, this, this telescope uh, rivals my Mead 8-inch, okay? It smokes my Orion 4.5 Star Blast, and not saying anything bad against Orion, guys. I'm not, I'm not dogging you. I'm just saying, I mean, this is this got some serious horsepower where the 114 doesn't, okay? Um, I was able to, uh, let's see, what did I, what did I target tonight? Let me give you guys a little preview on that. I went for M M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. I went for M45, uh, Polites. Uh, I did a couple star tests of, uh, Cirrus and Capella. I'll show you guys those. I also went after the Orion Nebula M42. I went after the Flame Nebula. And I also went after the Running Man, uh, Nebula, which are all kind of in the same local group in the Orion area. So, uh, uh I'll, let, I'll put that up on the video here, and you guys can go ahead and take a look at that. It really shows the power of the C6N when you couple it with a DSLR. As a matter of fact, when I, when I started this evening, I wanted to run some tests with my Mi DSi2 Pro, my little CCD imager. And uh, honestly, guys and gals, after picking up a DSLR and starting the image with this, I think it's time to retire the uh, DSi. I think it's going to be going uh, out the window here pretty soon because they just don't compare. They're apples and oranges. I get so much better images and resolution with this camera. It's easier to use. All I got to do is use my little button to uh, do the bulb settings and the shutter speeds. And then I can just download my uh, photos onto uh, Registacks or Windows Paint. I can stack them. I can enhance them. And boom, there's my picture. As opposed to the Mi DSi. Uh, there's a lot more involved in using that software to get your, you know, you have to take darks and all that stuff, and it, it, it's a real pain in the butt. The DSLRs are definitely the way of the future, and this this is my Canon EOS Rebel. This is an entry-level DSLR. I picked this up for 400 bucks. I know DSLRs go for well over $2,000 for really, really good models. An entry-level DSLR coupled with the Celestron C6 in Newtonian, the optical tube assembly, is a match made in heaven and you will see the proof in the pudding I will show you these pictures that I'll be putting up here right after I, I'm done with this little review so you can't go wrong guys and gals if, if you're looking for a, a nice uh, mid-range moderate power uh, reflector you cannot go wrong with the Celestron C6 in optical tube assembly it's a six inch reflector reflectors get it done uh, you know they, they, they got they got horsepower they're easy to use. All you got to do is make sure you keep it collimated. It's not hard to learn how to do. Uh, it, you know, there's very little maintenance with these guys other than collimation. But, it, you know, you know, if, if, if you go to a dark sky site and there's a lot of rumbling around on the road, yeah, you're going to have to realign your mirrors a little bit. But in the backyard, like at my home, this guy goes in the telescope room right here and he goes out back. And, you know, very rarely do I go to a dark sky site. It's just, it's, it's just not in the, the deck of cards right now. So, works really well. It's, it, like I said, it's lightweight. It's about nine, nine, nine point two, nine and a half pounds. About twenty nine inches long from previously. Uh, very easy to collimate. Or uh, a Celestron actually incorporate a plate in the back of the tube right here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera here, but uh, you, you you remove these three little screws. This little access plate comes off, and then you can collimate the mirror cell. Once you're done doing that, you put the plate back in the place, and you reinstall these three little screws. It really protects the bottom of the uh, OTA. I really like that. My Orion does not have that. That's a really, really cool little feature right there. Runs really well on the Mead LXG75. It's a very balanced tube, and it's got dashing good looks. I love how Celestron kept it black, and they just put Celestron, their logo, in orange to uh, pay tribute to uh, the Celestrons. And you guys also noticed that in my video, too. I decided to do all the, uh, the text and the uh, the wording all in orange in honor of Celestron because I was so impressed with this little OTA. Uh, it, 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 it's all around, it's a good scope, and I cannot wait to get this guy out to a dark sky site. It will perform very well. I'm actually liking using this more than my Schmidt Cassegrain because the Schmidt Cassegrain weighs so much more. I can set this guy up in five minutes and I'm viewing or I'm imaging or whatever I want to do that night. So, in conclusion, it's a very good telescope. For the price, I, I paid under $200 for this. It's a very, very well thought out telescope. It is a time tested design. Newtonians still have an edge when it comes to astrophotography or just some planetary viewing or lunar viewing and imaging, okay? The APO refractors that are out nowadays, yeah, they're outstanding for taking photos, but have you seen the price? of a six inch APO if you can find one you're gonna be paying more than maybe a new Cadillac okay I can get a six inch Newtonian for a fraction of the price 
and still deliver tack sharp images as I will show you in this video. Um, all my imaging is unguided. I, I, I've made that perfectly clear in all my videos. I don't have auto, -guide, uh, auto guiding capability on the LXD75. They just never were built with it. Uh, there, there is a way to do it, but it, it involves a lot of drivers and, and software and hardware you need to buy for the mount, and you just kind of have to put it all together and hope it works. Uh, I don't do that. I just do basically a really good alignment to the to, to Celestial North, pick my guide stars, and I adjust as I go. Um, so the images you'll be seeing that I took with the uh, Newtonium are unguided. There are two minute exposures each, and uh, they look really, really good. So um, it's again, it's a testament to the C6N. It's, it's, an, it's an amazing optical tube assembly. I cannot say enough good things about it. Guys and gals, fellow astronomers, if you guys are looking for a good entry level or moderate powered, moderate level reflector, give Celestron a look, okay? They're really the only ones besides Orion and anybody, you know, but besides Orion and maybe uh, Skywatcher and stuff like that, they're the only ones really making an optical tube like this. Mead doesn't make them no more, okay? Not a knock against me, just it is what it is. Give them a look, okay? They do a really good job. I'm impressed with it. It does a great job. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get to these pictures, and uh, I'll let my pictures be the judge for themselves. And uh, feel free to comment, uh, pros and cons, whatever you guys like to say. I'm open to all kinds of uh, constructive criticism and suggestions. Uh, anyway, I'm excited. I really want to show you these guys these pictures. So uh, this is Michael Skokakis, Stargazer 1 from Buckeye, Arizona, saying clear skies, have a good evening, and please enjoy the video. Oh, one last reminder. Uh, I've been giving updates. Uh, we have a new video coming out called, uh, it's, it's titled Clear Skies. This is going to be an extraordinary video. I'm, turn, I'm currently pro, uh, I'm producing it and processing it on Windows Movie Maker. It involves the telescopes and the pictures and just fellow stargazers and stuff like that. It's an A-plus video. I should be launching that at the end of January, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Anyway, Clear Skies, keep your telescopes pointed up, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.